Hello and welcome to Vitaris' Kitchen. I'm your host, Chef Vitaris. Once again, it's time for Shoot'em Up Saturday, and on the menu today we have something a little different. Duck Hunt. Uh, the recently released Wii U version, uh, which goes and takes the classic NES title and goes and um, updates it so that it can actually playable on a modern day TV. So what kind of flavor will it have? Let's find out. Duck Hunt, released by Nintendo in 1984 in Japan and 1985 in the U.S. Uh, the uh, original version of Duck Hunt for the NES when used um, the NES Zapper, um, but uh, due to the way that modern day televisions go and work, it's not possible to go and use um, old school light gun technology on modern day TVs. It has to go and uh, but it really only just works correctly with the CRT monitor. So, that being the case, Nintendo for the um, Wii U Virtual Console uh, release of Duck Hunt went and reprogrammed the game to go and make use of the Wii modes. So, for today's Shoot 'em Up Saturday, we're going to go and be playing through just one game of I'll go and pick game mode B, the two duck mode. Um, my, this is probably my preferred of the duck hunt modes, just because it's a little bit quicker. One duck just seems like it takes a little bit too much time. Two ducks uh, moves along at a good pace. All right, let's fire it up. Round one, there's our good buddy, um, jerk dog, or uh, let's see, duck hunt dog. Okay, so one of the changes you might notice right off the bat from the original Duck Hunt is with uh, using the Wiimote, uh, they've added a reticule on the screen to go and indicate where you're going and pointing. Uh, I feel this goes and makes this version of Duck Hunt uh, significantly easier, especially the clay shooting mode, um, than the... <coughs> than the original because you actually have a very um, firm idea of where you're going and pointing on the screen. Whereas with the uh, zapper, um, unless you went and had this, um, the barrel of the gun right up against the TV cheating that way, um, it was kind of a little bit difficult to go and tell with any great accuracy where you were going and aiming at on the screen. Um, so while we're going and talking about aiming, we'll go and talk a little bit about how the zapper went and worked. So the zapper went and used a photodiode to go and detect changes in light and dark on your television screen. So in the case of most of the light gun games, when you went and pulled the trigger on a game like Duck Hunt, the screen would initially go and flash black, and then the targets on the screen would go and briefly um, illuminate in white. Um, all this when took place in the um, time span of a few frames and was fast enough that the human eye couldn't really go and see it other than maybe just a brief screen flicker, which of course isn't present in this version since the, all that has been removed. Um, but the photodiode and the zapper would go and pick that up and based off of where it was pointed would go and uh, register a hit or not. So the problem with going and using that kind of technology on modern day TVs is that the HD TVs of today, the LCDs, the LEDs, and the plasma TVs go and... Oh, my first getaway. Go and use... Well, let's see, because of uh, various processes uh, that are take place in processing the image to display on the, sc the screen, there's a display lag of um, up to usually 60, 68, I believe is the upper end, 68 milliseconds um, that would go and make the timing for that kind of a system... Uh, impossible to actually go and register and thus your all of your shots would always go and register as a miss so fast forward almost actually I guess more than 30 years and we've got um, this new virtual console version that goes and uses the Wiimote 
on the Wiimote just goes and has a built-in infrared sensor that goes and picks up the two infrared beams um, being uh, shot out by the sensor bar and um, uses that to go and position your cursor, reticule, what have you, on the screen itself. Uh, what's great about that is since you have two points that you're going and um, basing off of, it's even able to go and kind of, to a certain extent, uh, indicate depth, which is neat, but ultimately unnecessary for this game that we're going and playing. Anyway. Ah, another flyaway. In regards to the game itself, well, this particular round I'm not doing so great that way, but I would go and say that the having the addition of <laughs> having the addition of the reticule makes aiming quite a bit easier, though I I really went uh, botched it there at the end. Well, uh, that was definitely not my like best run ever, but a good run all the same. So, with this kind of technology, hopefully Nintendo will also go and look at taking other games that go and use the NES Zapper and then from the Super uh, NES, the Super Scope, and maybe do the exact same thing with them, go and uh, update it so that it goes and uses the Wiimote versus... Um, the original technology that it went, was dependent on from the original systems. So it would be great to go and see um, other games like Hogan's Alley from the NES or um, like Battle Clash for the Super NES on the Virtual Console. Um, hopefully we get to go and see that. Uh, at any rate, thank you so much for going and joining me for Shoot'em Up Saturday. As always, if you have any suggestions for Shoot'em Ups for me to go and play in future episodes, by all means, please leave them in the comments below. And uh, I'd like to go and say thank you. This is my last episode for the 2014, so we'll be moving on to 2015, and I hope you'll go and join and support me in 2015. I really appreciate... Um, you taking the time to go and come out and uh, watch my videos. It really means a lot to me. So, thank you once again so much for going and coming out and um, joining me for Shoot'em Up Saturday, and I hope to go and see you again soon. <laughs>